access to well-fitting clothing matters. Today, the average American woman is plus size. She doesn't wear a size four or even a 10. She wears between a 14 and a 16. There are drastically fewer plus size clothes available in retail stores. Even online, there are radically fewer styles to choose from. Most women choose to make do with the options they have, rather than waste time shopping in stores that make them feel ignored or shamed. So first, why is the supply so low? One major clue is that young designers are simply never trained to design for anyone other than the thinnest of models. In 2016, Parsons School of Design, one of the country's top design schools, had only one plus size mannequin for 1,000 students. In petitioning the school for a wider range of mannequins to design with, student Nayara Chu argued that the school should keep its word on housing the designers of tomorrow and adopting progressiveness as their motto. Installing more plus size mannequins in our classrooms would open a lot of doors to emerging designers who believe in sizes higher than an eight, which is actually really small. This lack of training belies an underlying business-driven cultural bias. For over a century, fashion houses coupled with media powerhouses dictated not only what was in, but who was in. The messaging across the US and Europe was consistent for the past century. Thin bodies were the ideal. The fashion industry achieved exclusivity by holding up the rarest body type as the ideal. This worked for a while in keeping most of the population out of the party. Exclusivity itself is coming to be seen as hopelessly old fashioned and out of touch. The fashion world is slowly catching on to the new fashion and embracing reality. Inclusivity sells. We can now enjoy plus size models on covers, in fashion spreads, and on the runway. During the fall 2019 Fashion Week, Eleven Honoré, the luxury brand that sells sizes 10 to 20 plus, had its first ever runway show, and it was a sight to behold. For a few seasons now, many designers have had curved models on the runway. Chromat, Christian Siriano, Kushni, Prabal Garung, Women are being encouraged to embrace their bodies, redefine beauty, and speak out against fat-shaming critics and retailers. The fashion industry is clearly catching on, but the signs of change we're seeing have appeared before, in the 1970s and the 1990s, only to revert back to their old, starved ways. Will our current plus-size revival fizzle as those in the past have, or is it the new normal? The internet has made it impossible for retailers to ignore plus-sized women. The web affords much greater visibility and louder voices to everyone, turning plus-size bloggers and YouTubers into powerfully positive influencers with millions of followers. Body positivity is catching on with the help of body activists and plus celebrities. And while plus clothing of the past was used to mask curves, plus-size women are now emboldened to show off their bodies. Model Tess Holiday did it by creating the Instagram account F Your Beauty Standards. Ashley Graham was the first plus-size model to grace the Sports Illustrated Swimsuit Edition and has been featured on numerous covers and runways since. And when plus-sized Nigerian student Vivian Ayo Ephraim modeled a yellow bikini for an internet retailer, she turned into an overnight plus sensation. Despite greater visibility in the world, in retail stores, plus-size clothing still has major visibility issues. When they're stocked at all, plus sizes are often stigmatized in their own section, in corners, and out of the way spots. This division began in the early 1900s when retailers decided to put stout wear, as it was called then, in its own section, staffed by plus size women with the idea that it would put the shoppers at ease. While that may have worked then, today it only serves to call out women based on their size and treat them as other, despite being the majority of the population. And most clothing stores only carry smaller sizes, directing shoppers for size 16 and above to online stores. For example, I buy all of my clothes online. Online, there are thankfully many sites now catering to plus sizes, and the online future looks bright. Financial perks associated with e-commerce have helped startups and small companies get their clothes to the people. Today's revival is also righting the wrongs of plus size designs past. Out with the oversized and in with the better fit. Getting the right fit for plus clothing can be tricky. Designers can't just take a size four hourglass shaped woman and size up, which was the formula of the past. Luckily, designers are finally beginning to recognize that the designs themselves need to be reshaped, and technology is helping. A startup, DG3D Studio, uses 3D scanning to create a full rendering of your body to aid in the online size selection process. Imagine what this could mean for the future of plus wear. Wouldn't it be nice if everyone had clothes that made them feel confident? 
Will the cyclical nature of past plus size revival mean that we'll just keep rediscovering the majority of the female population over and over again? If companies can get over their elitism and fat phobia, they can unlock an entire group of people to their brand. And maybe this time, the plus size revival will be for real.